so far we've looked at the oscillator and the low frequency oscillator modules. However, in the way we've been working, we've actually been using them to do the same thing, and that is to generate a sound or to operate in such a way where the LFO is working as an oscillator. Well, now we're going to do the inverse of that and then look at the LFO and use it in more or less a traditional way. But quickly, let's compare the two of these. Notice how with the oscillator here, I'm able to change my wave shape. And I can change it smoothly. And when I get over to the square wave, I'm able to change the pulse width of this. And obviously, if we come in here and get a better view, you can see this a little bit more easily. Right? Pretty straightforward. When I come in and I bring in the LFO, we're going to see something very different. Okay, I'm going to set my LFO, the output here, and the output into here. All right. And now with the LFO, obviously, I need to increase the speed here until I get to roughly 100 if I want to be able to hear anything, right? Anything over 20, but 100 for most of us on almost any playback system. Now, the cool thing with this is that we have our different shapes, but I can't modulate smoothly between them. However, with this shape control, I get additional options. So this is what happens with the sine wave. This is what happens with the triangle wave. Etc. And this one also gives me a noise. And that's really, really cool, especially when you use it in more of a modulation context. All right. So I just want to show you the differences there. All right, so the LFO normally used as a modulator. That's why it has mod in the front of it. But again, it's not difficult for us to use an oscillator as an LFO or as a stand-in for an LFO, assuming it can go below 20 hertz, therefore outputting as a low-frequency oscillator. So again, let's go ahead and plug this back in. Apologize for that. And now, if I want, I'm going to put this as a uh, sine wave here. Unmute it. And now we're going to take the output of this and we're going to run it into modulation A source. All right. So it is now going to be generating for us an 11 hertz sine wave. And whatever I set this to, it is going to modulate according to those principles. So we're on a sine wave here. So we should expect that kind of a movement like this on whatever control we set it to. depth of modulation here. So this is way too fast. But as I bring it down, right, we're following that motion, and then I can change it. Pretty cool. So we have more of that saw. Or then with the square, boom, boom, under our range of human hearing. Right, so this really, in a lot of ways, the way I think about these two modules is there are times when I'd prefer to use this oscillator to act as an LFO, especially if I was to, for example, modulate the shape that's happening here. And if I was to do that, I probably would use the classic LFO. So I'll bring in my modulation LFO here. I'm going to have this continuing to modulate the pitch. Why don't we at least change this to something a little more interesting here and bring this up a little bit. We can always reduce the uh, range here. Maybe bring up the speed a little bit. And now I'm going to use this output here on the LFO and I'm going to run that into uh, this LFO here into the modulation source. 
And again, if we bring this up, it will make life a little bit easier. And technically, the way we could think about this is we're starting with this LFO, which is going to be modulating a control on this LFO, which is then modulating the pitch on this oscillator, which is outputting the sound. So really, the signal flow is like this. And this is why working with Reactor is uh, a lot of fun and a great uh, learning tool and a great learning resource. All right, so we can unmute it now. And we'll set this up. So you can hear how that shape is changing. And then what might be really cool to do would be to take another LFO and then have it just like at random adjusting what's going on here. So right now you can tell what's happening with these different shapes and everything else, right? You can kind of follow the modulation, but let's get something bouncing around almost like at random. So I'm going to take another LFO. I'm going to bring that to the front. This is going to be LFO one. This is LFO two. And it's very important that you keep up with this if you are working with reactor because otherwise you can get very confused all right so now i can uh, arrange these accordingly i'm gonna bring this shape up to more of the random here and get rid of that and bring it to how i like it and now i'm going to take the output of this run this into modulation source a and i'm going to have this just constantly adjusting the shape and so uh, I'll go over what I just did there in a second and show you a nice little reactor trick, but um, we're going to bring it up like this. And now if we put the speed up, you'll see it jumping around to different points at random. All right. And now when we bring this in, we're going to hear all sorts of crazy stuff happening to the pitch. <laughs> Let's actually bring this up then into more of a uh, FM sort of setting and see what else is happening with these controls. Find some sort of interesting sweet spot. And I could also take the output of this one, run into modulation source B. Every control you adjust could have a really significant impact on the final sound. something in here, but at this point I really couldn't do it just based on filling up these modulation slots. But there you have it. That's kind of how the LFO is working. I just want to show you very quickly with Reactor. If you're ever confused and you're working with Reactor blocks, especially with the standard ones, you can always go into this tab up here, go to the info view, and you can select the parameter. So what I did in this one case was I flipped this from being bipolar to unipolar, meaning that if I put this all the way down here to the bottom, and I'm in unipolar mode, it will jump all the way around. If I'm in bipolar mode, it's going to spend most of the time sitting at the bottom because it's trying to go beyond where this can go. And you can see now it's only able to get to the halfway point. All right, so just thought I would show you that. I'm not going to go through everything in great depth, um, but uh, in this case, obviously, uh, that, that's something probably worth showing you. And as long as you know about this info view, you should be really good to go. So those are LFOs. Hopefully that makes a lot of sense to you. And as we move forward with more traditional synthesis techniques, you'll see how LFOs can be deployed in all sorts of uh, very musical ways.